Hi everyone. Welcome back on my YouTube channel, Parth Doshi, Learning by Doing. So we are back again with next video in our series, Behind the Automation, Processes, Businesses and More, where we discuss the non-technical side of RPA. Not only that, we are also discussing what are the different strategies that goes behind an automation project or a process before the actual development starts. So with that, in the series, our first video was where we were talking about RPA CY. Now in this second video, we are going to address another topic that is how small businesses can start with their automation journey. So hi, Shripad, welcome again for the next video that we are collaborating on for the series. Thank you, Parth. Uh, it's a pleasure connecting with you again and uh, looking forward to contribute more to the community so that you know people can learn and, yeah. and, and start implementing best of the practices in automation. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that's the aim with the series, Shripa. Right. So, like I just highlighted, the topic that we are discussing today is how small businesses can start their automation journey. Right. So, why this topic? Right. Why I choose this particular topic is we normally hear in different articles posted by UiPath or different automation platforms that this MNC implemented hundred processes or maybe migrated four five hundred processes and all of that. Right. But in all of this. I, I just have that thought randomly many times that how can small businesses, not MNCs with large organization, uh, huge number of employees and budget and everything can implement the automation, but how small businesses can automate it. What I normally have in my thoughts is that maybe they can just use some free tools, right? To automate their processes or they can, instead of going to RPA platforms, if it can be simply automated by some Python scripts or C sharp coding or something like that, they can do that. But I, I just want to understand from you how they can also begin their end-to-end -end automation journey, like how these other organizations are doing, right? So what are your views on that, Shripan? Uh, quite, quite a wonderful topic to talk upon because we all have been doing automations with enterprise uh, right. and uh, often we have not been involved in delivering automations to small businesses but yes that's a bigger challenge uh, is because uh, small businesses uh, need to look at uh, improved uh, productivity uh, risk mitigations faster turnaround time to mm -hmm. uh, end customers and yeah. the competitive advantage and if you don't look at these topics uh, or these particular KPIs, then these small businesses would would tend to fall apart and would never grow. And I think uh, intelligent process automation is going to be the way ahead uh, uh, to you know enhance their productivity. Now the challenge is quite big over here is because these companies come with a smaller budget; uh, they don't have an enterprise wide budget. So how would they start off with? And yes. Uh, always the thought process comes in to go for open source tools. Okay. Uh, like like you mentioned, Python, C Sharp, and uh, okay. various other options which are there in the market. But I mm -hmm. think uh, we are going way ahead uh, on tools. Okay, uh, Primarily, the first thing that they should identify is, uh, do they really have a repetitive and time-consuming uh, activities okay. or processes that should be automated? Okay, mm -hmm. they need to identify uh, whether there are processes uh, that needs an overhaul at the supply end, or is it at the demand end, or is it at the customer support end? So uh, mm -hmm. the first thing that they need to do is uh, do a, a process mining, review the processes, okay. uh, understand which process needs to be automated, and uh, yeah. identify whether they're really time consuming, as I said. Right. Second thing is, uh, once they are able to do that, okay, they should also look at what is the available budget for them to deliver. It's because even if you get the open source tools like Python, C Sharp, or mm -hmm. you go for automation, which is basic, like an attended automation, because uh, you don't need um, uh, enterprise-wide automations unless it's really a big uh, scope of delivery. And right. even if it is, then yes, getting onto one or two runners is is good amount uh, mm -hmm. to be invested upon. Okay, because you can still build bots using right. the uh, studio, or maybe uh, uh, that that could be done through a, a studio web also. So yes, those those are the options that are available. But uh, prior to that, 
let's it is very important that they should look at the budget that is allocated them to mm. deliver that and and with that budget what could be looked at as a resource for an automation needs to be understood so yeah. uh, you you cannot go for a solution architect sort of a thing you might have mm-hmm. to go for someone who is like a, a senior developer who is jack of all trades but master right. of none yeah right. something so of just, that uh, right one, one more that. thing over here shripa right now since they have a very tight budget right uh, i i just have one point over here how much do you think that upskilling their employees the current employees in the organization right that is also uh, i think a good way to bring that automation mindset within the organization i think rather than building a complete new team or hiring a set of people right they can also upskill the people which are already in the organization and a team can be built with that as well right yeah i think i think that's the best way to do that is because uh, even if you get uh, your staff to look at okay there would be certain individuals who are uh, very creative who have right. got some hands on on computer technologies and who who have good amount of logic so if you can right. help them uh, work on low code no code applications like uh, ui path has one uh, you have power automate uh, to look right. at okay uh, you have studio web uh, which can deliver that so uh, right. at least they could start building basic processes on right. their own uh, desktops or laptops right. and then right. start off with that uh, with a trigger and uh, i think uh, a training is needed over here okay mm-hmm. uh, maybe the, the management should think of having one refresher training for uh, the talented uh, pool that they have right. identified so so that that would evangelize and right. save right. some cost on uh, resources uh, for resources. automation right. Right. yeah but that right. will not be a full proof if you really full proof yeah that uh, yeah going uh, end to end and and getting some results but yes if you want to test waters hmm. then this is a good approach that you should look at uh-huh. yeah. okay okay yeah then i think uh, part uh, what we can do is uh, once you have identified all this okay they should kick start with a small pilot project okay or a hmm. proof of concept uh, hmm. to understand how uh, uh, the concept of automation is getting uh, into an output delivered by an automation mm-hmm. uh, that is one way to look at it you could also partner with a team of uh, you know consulting uh, experts okay mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. if you have good amount of a budget and you don't want to go through an in house training or look at your own yeah. talented pool so you can do that as a practice and uh, you can have a, a kpi based delivery so uh, you could have a consulting partner and tell them that you know if you could deliver me a kpi of so much uh, as a end result on mm-hmm. sales or mm-hmm. supply or on demand mm-hmm. via automation uh, that's the uh, benefit that you would get as my consulting delivery so that is how you could look at if you are working with a consulting partner so that's mm-hmm. another way to do that uh, yeah. but uh, the improvement starts in house you first need to also look at process optimization okay. and uh, improvement in your own processes before opti- uh, before automating because if you are able to get the mudas out that is a waste right. process out okay. uh, and if you are able to get a good percentage of delivery out after hmm. automation and uh, for example if earlier the process was delivering a 30% efficiency and after process automation you have got it to 50% right and with automation you would at least come to 80% okay that's mm-hmm. how automation works Got it. so first Got it. you need to do optimization and that is how you would be able to right. uh, you know experience the benefits and finally uh, you should ensure that whatever has been delivered as a data quality or uh, mm. the integrity in which the bot is working or the automation is working is that really supporting business and mm. if that is supporting business i think then you have a better use case uh where you start implementing intelligent automation uh post rpa okay and mm-hmm. and this has to be like a csi journey you have to monitor the progress uh yeah. of how bots are running evaluate it uh mm-hmm. and and then look at scaling up uh from your individual desktops or a laptops to a vm or a server for mm-hmm. an enterprise wide automation so 
that's how uh, the small businesses should ideally be looking out for automation and hence the mantra is very simple first uh, optimize the process second uh, uh, you know look at which one do you want to pick up hmm. uh, for a benefit that is coming to your organization right. third uh, either partner with a consulting uh, company or build your in talent pool inside and start with attended automations uh, hmm. and work with low code no code applications yeah. uh, till till you get an edge uh, or you get a feel that yes i think we are good and we can start building more and then finally uh, go for an enterprise wide automation i think that's the yeah. rather that i could think of yeah right 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 so one thing that we discuss in the, in this complete uh, discussion right that the budget is always a problem for small uh, business enterprises that want to implement it right so i just have a thought what do you think about rpa as a service for them like can that type of licensing model or can that type of offering by other rpa or intelligent automation companies helps the small businesses in kick starting their journey in automation yeah i think that that is where i mentioned looking at your consulting partners is very important to kick start this journey because you don't know how to manage right. this particular right. uh, giant okay uh, it can be a boon it can be a bane right mm -hmm. uh, and and there is an uh, a clear saying either you automate or you evaporate <laughs> so, <laughs> right. uh, it's uh, you have you have uh, a problem at both the ends so you will have to play it very smartly rp as a service can be started off and then you could run solo Uh, right. also if you look at various low code and no code applications there are various ready bots or solution accelerators right. available right. in right. supply space uh, in procurement space in financial space you can just pick them uh, customize them as per your particular process and you can still run right. with uh, less of development efforts but yes having someone really consult you on that would help you uh, to kick start the journey uh, right maybe mature and yeah. once you're good then you could start on your own that's how it should yeah. be yeah okay yeah I, i think it was a pretty insightful discussion knowing about the different in this also it helps us understand what are different phases of automation right we like initially we started with talking about how it can help small businesses but i think this should be journey of every organization first of all identifying the process optimizing it then starting with pilot projects like it is like start small scale big right so yeah and I, i i like the one line that you used automate or evaporate right so yeah <laughs> i i think that is interesting so yeah i think we pretty much covered different uh, context of how small businesses can start with their automation journey so yeah thank you so much ripad for sharing your insights on this particular topic and we will soon bring more interesting topics as well Thank you everyone for watching the complete video as well. See you Shripal. Thank you. Thank you.